That's 2018, it's the classic motor show at the NEC. We're here on the Lancaster Insurance Stand, a huge supporter of the show, and every year they pull out a really lovely stand. But this year, it's quite nice because it's the elderly heritage. Oh, oh I see where you uh, went with that. Mr. Mike Brewer. Yeah, I see where you went, yes. And on one side of their stand, they it's have- the old stuff. They have the old stuff, and on the other side of the stand- It's the young yeah. stuff. Okay, so let's obviously oh, start right. with I, the old I stuff. I got you, I see where you were going with that. <laughs> right, so go Mike, on. stand here, we're gonna talk about some cars. Yes, go. <laughs> okay, well, let me show you some stuff from my generation, shall I? Uh, so here we have a 20 Mini. Now, there was only a few of these ever made. They're actually made uh, by BRM. This is an engine in the rear. Of a mini look at the amount of people around it as well it's great so engine in the rear engine in the front four-wheel drive mini uh, it was meant you can see with these air scoops at the side it was meant to compete in the world rally championship it couldn't really get it right it wasn't really a great performing car but incredibly rare and we've actually got two of them here at the NEC this year so a fantastic car to see so how are you going to beat that? Right, well think about uh, cars that represent design icons and the Mini's obviously a design icon, it's classless, you could be a bricklayer, a plumber, the Queen of England, a rock star, you drove a Mini. So what could you do from a design perspective to take Isagonis' original Mini, unbelievable bit of kit, and make it new, especially if you were a German company. What you do is you set about on the biggest redesign ever. You create, I think they did eight clay models and they chose this one. And actually, this one was designed by a good friend of Mike and mine, uh, a guy called Frank Stephenson, who led the team. And this is the modern day version of Isagonis' original car, the BMW Mini, beautifully displayed by Mr. Mike Brewer. And it's lovely, isn't it? I mean, the modern Mini is every inch of Mini, and now it's becoming a classic. You know, the first generation Mini, we've actually featured one on our show, is now becoming a modern classic, and people really do appreciate them. Great little cars, really good fun to drive. But if we could throw this out to them and there was a competition, you know I've won that one hands down. I mean, seriously. What's the competition? Well, if there was, between the old Mini and the new Mini, I've just absolutely annihilated you, you know that. Tell me. Well, the old Mini is so much nicer, more charismatic and better. I agree. Right, good. Right, okay. perfect. But right, lovely. Well, 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 we're staying so that means, what I'm trying to say one, is, one nil. older is better than younger. That's what I'm trying to say. Right, so... In a car want, space, well, talking about design... Do you want to talk about this one? We will go straight to this, but think about this for a second. Is it going designs an original Mini? Many years later, BMW, a German brand, takes that iconic British brand and they have a huge global success. Not an easy feat designed by Frank Stephenson and his team in Munich. But could they do it twice? Now, let me set the scene. Fiat were in massive trouble. Financially, they needed to be saved. Frank Stephenson also designed this, the Fiat 500. Yeah, so once Frank got his, uh, once he got his pens out and he designed a Mini, obviously he was gonna get caught by every single manufacturer in the world. They all wanted him to come and work. And they asked him to reimagine the Fiat 500. And I think this is absolutely perfect. This is the warm version. This is the R bath. What a cracking looking car. Very successful, sells in big numbers. Big but, numbers. But is it as cool as this one over here? Seriously, we could pick this up, me and Ants, and we could take it home as a paperweight and put or it on we, the no, shelf. We could actually steal it. We could steal it. I mean, literally. <laughs> we we should either, consider stealing it. One at either it. end. Uh, so this is the nice original R bath, um, and I love this car because the Fiat 500 is a car that moves the nation. It was post or austerity uh, in Italy. Um, uh, the, the, the manufacturer and the, and the factory in Turin created a car that can move four adults around the country, and for the first time ever in history, Italians could go to their beautiful coastline and visit the coastline. They could get in and around their cities. Right, so that's that. Right, so now we've got, we've done some icons here, haven't we? We've done some real icons. But there has to be the ultimate icon. For me and for Amp, we are absolutely crazy about these cars. And I can't believe there's one here where people can sort of lean against it. I'm touching, I'm touching <laughs> it's, a it's a 1972, I think this is. Um, Porsche Carrera, you ready? This is an RSR. So this very car here uh, is probably worth about half, half a million, million pounds, yeah. yeah. This car, this one here that we're touching, is worth about half a million pounds. And it's in a fantastic colour. It's beautiful. If you owned a Porsche it? in that colour, you're basically a legend. But of course, Porsche, <coughs> yep. huge brand. And think about Porsche as a, a 911. They've taken a, a concept, a model of 911, they've made it run and run again and again and again. And the reason it's been so successful is because the public fall in love with it. Recognisable shape, absolutely smashing brand. And I think 
the 911 will run forever. It will run forever, and it's out the box shape. This, you know, as soon as it was created, it captured the imagination of people. It shouldn't work. This car shouldn't work, even in the modern guys we're going to see in a minute. It shouldn't work, and the reason it shouldn't is right here, hanging out over the rear axle, is a huge power plant. Is a uh, in this one, it's a 2.4 liter six cylinder engine. It's hanging out over the rear axle, and remember, it's got no traction control, no computer aids in that car. All the and good bits. All the good bits, <laughs> and, and that car is somehow it's one of the most pleasurable driver cars in the world uh, and it is an absolute honour to be standing next to a, a genuine RSR, and it's very really, nice. It's really interesting because we're looking on the left hand side, the original design, so far we've covered the Mini, the Fiat 500 and the Porsche and we look at the Mini, the Fiat 500 and actually there's a significant difference between the Minis and the Fiat's but not a lot, a lot of difference, difference between yeah, these and check so. out the new one. Yeah, I love this car, this is the GT3 RS, uh, this is uh, one of the latest hyper cars to come out of Stuttgart uh, is every inch purposeful. There's not a part on this car that doesn't look like it means something. Every <laughs> single part of it means something, doesn't have a it? Check this out. Come and have a look at this little bit of detail. I love this on this car. When you, you know a car looks like it's business if it has stuff like this. This doesn't need to exist in any scenario on the road ever. But it looks like it could be Batman's car, and for that reason, it's cool. It is cool. This car is £250,000 uh, and just to put that into context, this is a brand new GT3 RS, one of the most sought after cars on the planet at the moment, yet yeah, it's still only half the price of the original 2.4 RSR. So, so would you have two of these or one of those? Oh no, I'd definitely have one of them. I'd have one of them as well. Yeah, I'd definitely have one of them. That car is just like... That car's special, yeah. Well, it's a work of art, isn't it? It's like a, buying a, an oil painting. This is like buying a PlayStation. The thing is that when the hall's empty tonight, because we, when the, clo uh, the show closes, Mike and I always have a little wander around with no one about. I mean, I, I, I think we should just steal it. I could do that. I could do that. I've probably got a key for it that'll fit. Right, I now, could repaint it, no one will ever know. Um, right, more icons, VW. VW absolutely smashed it out of the park with the Golf. As soon as they built the first Golf, the Mark One, they captured the imagination of the driving world. The reason that we have the term hot hatch is because in during part to VW, and they've created this whole sector of hot hatch love. And of course, the Golf is a bit like the Porsche. It runs on and on and on. We have a current Golf. This is the latest incarnation. It's fair to say, uh, as motoring journalists, uh, uh, the Golf Mark One was great, Golf Mark Two, was great, uh, but once it got Mark 3, Mark 4, Mark 5, Mark 6, Mark 6, they become slightly bloated, slightly middle-aged, a little bit like myself. They become a little bit old. You're like a golf. And then in the, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm a bit like a golf. And then in the latest guys is, they've realized, and me and Natan have, uh, have these discussions all the time, what is it that made the original car so special? What is that DNA? And why do manufacturers breed that out in successive cars? And what they've managed to capture it again in the latest Golf, it's much lighter, it's much more uh, vibrant to drive. It does give you a visual experience when you're behind the wheel. But still today, although this is an amazing car, I would not take the keys for this because I'd fight you for the keys for this. Mark 1 Golf GTI, uh, actually me and Ant have just uh, restored a Mark 1 Golf GTI. Weirdly a black one. A, a black one, and we can tell you, just being in that car, uh, there's something about it, there's something magical about it. It's it like really, putting a glove on. It is, it's just, it's just wonderful. And it's that, uh, that whole simplicity in the experience. It's completely analog. It's a complete analog experience rather than a digital experience. Um, so overall, we've got this old versus new section. I think you'll find that the old section other than the GT3 RS is really All right, cool. so let's do a little pop quiz. So one at a time then, which would you take? Old Mini, New Mini? I'd definitely the Old Mini. Old Fiat, New Fiat? I'd definitely take the Old Fiat. Old Porsche, New Porsche? <laughs> We'd both have that older Porsche. Yes, we would. Old Golf, New Golf? We would both definitely take the older Golf. So I think you've heard it here first. Yes. That Mr. Mike Brewer, Television's Mike Brewer selects the old section above any other new car, and I'm afraid I'm the same. Yes, I would be the same. But look, it's not to say in another 20 years' time we'll be standing there at the Classic Motor Show as old men on the Lancaster Insurance stand. And there'll be a third row. And there'll be a third row because they will then be the classic cars and these will be the vintage cars. True that. It is true that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed our little tour around the Lancaster stand. If you're coming to the show, make sure you come and visit. And thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Tell up. -bye.